Hello. In this guide, I will walk you through the process of setting up an efficient bird farm for amassing morsels and feathers. So let's get started. The first step is to find a suitable 6x6 tiles area on the surface world. You can choose any location. But Lunar Island is the most advantageous due to its lack of sanity-related annoyances. Once you've found the location, plant a mini sign in the center of the area. This will serve as your reference point. Now, it's time to set up the bird guiding system. Plant at least nine anemones around the center, as shown in the diagram. Their bird repelling property will help ensure that the birds land in a single spot as a cluster, rather than being scattered all around. To ensure precise placement, make use of the geometric placement mod. Next, build Winona's catapult which will kill birds for you. Make sure that the bird gathering area, marked as purple on the diagram, is within the catapult's area of effect. Build Winona's generator nearby to power the catapult. It's important to note that using Winona's generator is recommended over Winona's generator, as it provides better control over the catapult's operation. The generator is fueled by niter, which you can easily obtain through loot gain from this farm. You can turn morsels into gold nuggets at the Pig King and then transmute gold nuggets into niter using Wilson's skill transmute or two. Another advantage of using Winona's generator is that one niter is enough to power it through the day and dusk, which are the only times of the day when birds can land. For the next step, you will need Glomer. Use Glomer's flower to mark the spot, as indicated by the yellow dot in the diagram. Position Glomer directly on top of the flower, using Glomer's shadow to help you determine the position. One important thing to note is that it's the position of Glomer itself that matters, not the position of Glomer's flower. Now, it's time to activate the catapult. Fuel Winona's generator and make the catapult attack Glomer. Don't worry, Glomer is immune to catapult's damage. To make the catapult attack Glomer, you can either attack Glomer directly or fake an attack. If you choose to attack, utilize the force attack command. Press and hold the control key or your designated key bind and hover over Glomer with your cursor. Once you see the attack prompt, click the left mouse button. Remember to be mindful of Glomer's health as it only has 100 HP. To avoid damaging Glomer, you can trick the catapult into activating without causing any harm to Glomer by faking an attack. Now, to successfully fake an attack, you'll need to be quick. Immediately after issuing the attack command, move in any direction using the movement keys. This swift movement should be done before the hit from the attack lands. It can take a few attempts to trigger the catapult using either of the methods, so be patient and don't give up. If you damage Glomer, you can heal it using non-food healing items like healing salve, spider gland, mosquito sac, or honey poultice. Once the catapult is triggered, it's time to start reading birds of the world. Stand in the previously marked center and use the book. Timing is crucial here. If you're too fast, the spell will fail. If you're too late, the new group of birds may get scared by previous birds dying and will fly away. The best time to read the book is when the catapult begins to retract. Wait for the sound or animation indicating the retraction and then interact with the book. And there you have it. With your bird farm up and running, you'll now have access to an abundance of valuable resources like morsels and feathers. Morsels can be utilized in various ways. They can spoil into rot, which is great for fertilizing your crops, grass, monkey tails, berry and banana bushes. You can also convert them into gold nuggets via pig king or into eggs via bird cage. Moreover, with Wilson's transmute skills, you can further transform the loot from the farm, morsels into meat, and gold into niter. By planting different types of turfs, you can attract specific bird species. 
To attract redbirds and snowbirds, you can plant grass turf. If you're aiming to attract crows and canaries, leave the ground barren without any turf. You'll need to have a friendly scarecrow nearby for canaries to appear. Jet feathers can be used to craft feather pencils, while azure and saffron feathers are best utilized in the production of darts. And here's an exciting tip. By combining gold and saffron feathers from this farm, you can create electric darts. This is a powerful addition to your arsenal, dealing a staggering 90 damage to targets and a whopping 150 damage when they're wet. These darts are particularly effective against formidable foes like deaf worms, tentacles, and merms who are always wet. The best part is that with the addition of a reed's farm, you can establish a self-sustaining mass production of electric darts, ensuring you have a constant supply of this great weapon. And here's another fantastic aspect to consider. Setting up a fish farm using the angler's survival guide will allow for sustainable crafting of regular darts. Catch spawn fish using strident trident and let them spoil naturally over time. You can gather bone shards by using a hammer on the spoiled fish. These bone shards can then be transformed into hound's teeth using Wilson's transmutability. With the hound's teeth in hand, you can now craft an ample supply of regular darts. I hope those tips will enhance your Don't Starve Together experience. Happy farming!